Hi guys, here we are again, another Spanish lesson. So our title for today is ¿Cómo sería tu novio, tu novia ideal? This question translates to what would your ideal boyfriend be like or what would your ideal girlfriend be like? The learning objective is to review adjective agreements and the conditional tense in order to describe your ideal boyfriend or girlfriend and that will be our last task for today. Excellent. So our starter is, in five minutes, I'd like you to set a timer on your phone, please, is to look at this grid here. We've got different colours and they represent when you have learnt these. So in green was last lesson, in pinky orange, that was last week, in the grey purpley colour, before Easter, and in the yellow is ages ago. Each one is worth a different amount of points. And in five minutes, I would like you to try and answer as many of the boxes as you can. You could have a strategy, work from last lesson, and then work your way back to last week and before Easter, or just go for the ones which you're confident with. Five minutes, off you go. Okay, so hopefully we have got these as the following answers. Take a look through what we've got here and total up the points you would have scored. So if you wrote sobrino for being the Spanish for nephew, that's one point. If you wrote down la for the direct object pronoun for she, it, it's that pinky purple colour, so it's worth two points. Before Easter, Adjective endings for all masculine forms, O and OS, singular and plural, that's worth three points. If you only put one answer for this one, give yourself one and a half. And then the yellow is four points. So for example, this one, how many bullet points for a 90 word question are four? Go back to the other screen if you can't remember what the question was. If not, we shall move on. OK, guys, so we've done a lot of work on adjectives recently, which is really great. And they are always going to be coming up in different areas throughout your Spanish lessons. So what I'd like you to do now with this table is to read the adjectives here in Spanish. They are in the singular form only. You don't need to worry about the plural, because what I'm looking for you to focus on today is the English. So you've got to look timido, timida. What does that mean? In English. So we've got some letters here, Y, H and S. That's not the correct spelling in English, but we've got to put it in the correct spelling. So that is going to be shy. Carry on throughout the rest of these. You may or may not have seen some of these adjectives before, so take a guess using the letters that are in the jumbled up order and then we'll go through the answers and we'll move on to the next slide, which is a bit more for you. OK, let's go through the answers for this slide. We have the adjectives autoritario, autoritaria, meaning bossy. Amable, meaning kind. Using these letters here, M-O-F-A-U-S, famoso, famosa. Leads us to think it might be a cognate, a word that's very similar in two languages. That is correct, it's famous. Despiadado, despiadada, bit of a weird one here, but a great adjective to mean a ruthless. Estricto, estricta, we've seen this with our school module, that was back in theme three. Strict, mentirosa, mentiroso. This is dishonest. You could always call someone a mentiroso or a mentirosa, which is another way of saying they are a liar. But yeah, obviously, we need to be nice people. We need to be amable. Sincero, honest. You could also say sincere, but we're looking at honest here. Torpe means clumsy. Inteligente, that's another cognate, intelligent. Intimidante intimidating and paciente, patient. Same again, guys. Give yourself three minutes for this one. 
Okay, excellent. So number 13, seguro, segura. We've got a mixture of letters which create the word confident. Main. Hmm. That is a word in English, but we're actually looking for mean, insoportable. If you remember the opinion phrase I've given you before, no supporto, like I cannot stand. So that's, you could argue that's being mean, and that comes from here. Sonriente, smiley, encantador, dreamy, trabajador, we've seen this a lot in theme three, hardworking, talentoso, talented, creativo, creative, goloso, greedy, and protector, protective. Because you can describe someone as being protective, for example, your parents are protective of you as their child. Okay, you now have a phrase on your screen and imagine you had a mini whiteboard. I want you to write the feminine form. So this is our masculine form, es galoso, change it to be feminine. How are you going to do that? Okay, so the answer would be golosa because we take off the O we change it to an A, regular adjective ending. Next one, es divertido. What's the feminine form? The answer is, es divertida. Next one, es hablador. He is chatty. What's the feminine form? It would be, Es habladora. Remember, this was one of the slightly irregular ones with regards to the spelling, and you can always go back and find that in our previous YouTube video. And we've got es inteligente. What's the feminine form? It's the same because it ends in an E. Remember, Adjectives that end in an E in Spanish stay the same for masculine and feminine singular, and we just add an S to make them plural. Okay, lovely. So that's the end of the adjectives part of the lesson, and we're going to be moving on to the conditional tense. Can you remember what the conditional tense is for? Pause the video, see if you want to go back and find some notes. If not, let's move on. So the conditional tense is when we want to talk about something we would like to do. It's also known as the dream tense because you're wishing and hoping for something that would be yours or would happen. The formation. It's one of the more logical ones in Spanish. So let's look at the regular formation. We find an infinitive, that being a verb in its purest form, ending in AR, ER and IR. We leave it as it is. We do not remove anything. We keep it and we add the following endings. So, ia, ias, ia, iamos, ias, ian. Make a note of these if you wish to. Otherwise, let's look at the irregular formation because we still need our infinitive, obviously, but it has a different stem. And here are some of the most common ones. There's actually not very many in the conditional tense, which makes it really great. So we've got tener, which means to have, and the stem is tendra. We wouldn't say teneria, it doesn't make sense. And then have a look at the other spellings and make a note of them if you wish to. Once you've got this stem, you add the ending you need. So. We take this and we go to our table and we add what we want. Here are some examples for you in the orange box. So a regular one, I would eat, comeria. Comer is the infinitive and we just add the ending. He would say, this is an irregular one because I've gone to my list here. Decir means to say and it needs to start like this with dir. And then I just add ia, so diria. Same for this one, we would go out. I go to my list, salir means to go out. That's the starter, that's the stem. 
I then go to this table. We saldríamos. And an irregular one to finish off with, they would listen. Escuchar is our infinitive. And then we add the ending. Escucharían. Lovely. Make sure you pause the video and make any notes if you need to. Let's go otherwise. You have on the left some Spanish phrases and on the right you have the translation. The translation is what I would like it to say, but I'm a bit stuck as to which verb I need to be using. So you need to read this sentence, read the translation and decide if it's going to be escucharía or escucharíamos and then work your way through and decide on the answers. Give yourself four minutes for this exercise and come back to the video when you're ready. Okay, so these are our answers. I would listen to music every day. Escucharía la música todos los días because I've got my infinitive, I add my ending. You would drink lemonade during the holidays. Beberías limonada durante las vacaciones. The reason why it's not beberíais, as in you all, is because it doesn't specify here in the translation to say you all would drink lemonade. Number three, saldríamos. This is irregular, so we've got to have our stem, so it wouldn't be saliríamos like one of the options was. Number four, escribirían. They would write an email to their teacher. We've got our possessive adjective here, su, and infinitive plus ending. And then the last one, lovely opinion phrase, diría que, I would say that. And you've got a nice phrase here, diría que es importante tener amigos. I would say that it is important to have friends. Lovely. Moving on, guys. You now have a reading task. You have got three texts and they are going to busca amor por la red. Search for love on the internet. La red is another way of saying uh, social media and networks. Look at the questions here. Give yourself six to eight minutes to answer them. They just need one word. You're just giving the name for who is sporty, who is chatty, who is organised. Six to eight minutes. Pause the video. Off you go. OK, back for the answers, which are as follows. So who is sporty? Luis. And we know that because he says here, me encanta el deporte. I love sport. Who is chatty? It's also Luis because he says, I am quite chatty. Soy bastante hablador. Nice intensifier here. Organized. En carne. This lady here. The clue is organizada. Nice cognate for you. Who would like to meet someone who is good looking? We've got two answers for number four because they have the use of the adjective guapo or guapa. Really lovely phrase for you to note down here. Deberia ser. He, she must be. So in this case, we know that Frederico is talking about a girl because guapa has an A ending that signifies feminine. So she should be good looking and sporty. And then here we know that Encarne is talking about a boy because it's guapo. Debería ser guapo. He must be good looking. Laid back. Luis. So debería ser muy activa talking about a girl. She must be very active. Y tranquilo. Tranquilo is another way of saying calm, quiet, chilled, laid back. And who has a good sense of humour? We are looking at the answers Frederico and Encarne again with this lovely phrase con un buen sentido de humor, with a good sense of humour. Fabulous, guys. These texts are all going to help you and they are models 
for what you could use in order to describe tu novio or tu novia ideal. Use this success criteria, please. Start at green and work your way down to red. So, give us some details about yourself. Name, age, where you live. Me llamo, vivo. Physical descriptions. Think about hair, eye colour. Tengo el pelo castaño. Soy bastante alto. Soy bastante divertida. Personality traits. That's where the intensifiers come in. Muy bastante. Look at our previous lesson if you can't remember them. And this is the challenge. To tell us about what you are seeking in a boyfriend or girlfriend using the conditional tense. Think about hobbies and interests. So what do you like to do that you would want from someone else in a relationship? So you could say he, she would play football. Jugaría al fútbol. You could say a negative as well, something you don't want. He, she would not listen to classical music. No escucharía la música clásica. We've got some useful vocabulary for you here. So, me gustaría conocer a un chico. I would like to meet a boy. We've got our phrase here from the reading. And this new one here for you using the structure of lo que. Lo que estaría buscando es. What I would be looking for is. Uh, you can write this in your book, take a photo and upload it to Teams, or you could do it on a Word document and upload to Teams so that I can give you a what went well and an even better if, guys. Muchas gracias. Espero que estéis bien y disfrutado de la lesión. Adiós.